Hi, this is Dr. K from I Medical School, and today we're going to talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Let's begin by discussing what is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, otherwise known as HCM. Hypertrophic means enlargement or an increase in volume. Cardio refers to the heart, and myopathy tells us this is a muscle disease. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a muscle disease characterized by an enlargement of the heart muscle. In particular, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy typically refers to left ventricular heart muscle enlargement that narrows the left ventricle. If we look at the heart muscle closely, we can see that normally the muscle fibers and cells are oriented in an organized and parallel manner. The organized pattern allows for effective conduction of electrical signals and for effective contraction of the heart. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the muscle cells are disorganized, which contributes to ineffective contraction and poor electrical signal conduction. When the heart cannot move blood effectively, this can lead to systemic symptoms. What are the symptoms of HCM? Symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy include fatigue, shortness of breath, palpitations, chest pain, and can even cause someone to lose consciousness. The reason HCM is so important is that it increases the risk of arrhythmias or abnormal heart beats. These arrhythmias can arise from the top of the heart called supraventricular arrhythmias or from the bottom of the heart called ventricular arrhythmias. Due to the increased risk of arrhythmias, there is a significant increase in the risk of sudden death with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Keep in mind, most people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will have a completely normal lifespan, and sudden death is a less common complication. Interestingly, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be passed through families as an autosomal dominant condition, meaning only one defective gene needs to be passed for a child to be affected. Some rare diseases like Fabry's disease or glycolipid storage diseases can result in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Athletes can develop left ventricular hypertrophy due to strenuous exercise, and though this can also place them at risk for arrhythmias, this is different from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can lead to drastic changes in heart physiology, which can be picked up on a physical exam. First, remember, not everyone with HCM has an abnormal physical exam, as they may have no signs of their underlying heart disease. The classical physical exam findings include a crescendo-decrescendo murmur that occurs after S1, which is the first heartbeat, and is best heard at the left lower sternal border. The murmur can radiate to the left axilla, there are two components to a HCM murmur. The first part has to do with the left ventricle outflow obstruction caused by the enlargement of the heart wall. The enlarged wall causes a smaller left ventricle. As a result, the left atrium has more difficulty filling the left ventricle with blood. At the same time, the enlargement of the left ventricle muscle wall narrows the area that blood can flow out of the heart. This is called left ventricular outflow obstruction. The second component is the turbulent flow of blood against the mitral valve. Because the hypertrophic muscle makes it difficult to push blood out of the heart, some blood is unable to exit the heart and kind of whirls around the left ventricle in a turbulent flow and rushes against the mitral valve. These two components occur at the same time, causing the crescendo-decrescendo HCM murmur that radiates to the axilla. The murmur of HCM is similar to aortic stenosis as both cause obstruction to the outflow of the left ventricle. Certain maneuvers can be performed to help differentiate between HCM and aortic stenosis. We group these maneuvers into those that affect preload and those that affect afterload. Preload is how much the muscle fibers of the heart stretch in the ventricle due to the volume of blood that fills the chamber. For example, 
as a water balloon fills with water, the stretch force created is called preload. Preload is directly related to the volume that fills the balloon or the heart chamber. Afterload is the resistance the heart must overcome to eject blood to the rest of the body. Imagine squeezing a water balloon that is clamped closed. The resistance you feel due to the clamp as you squeeze the water out of the balloon is the afterload. There are five main maneuvers that can help you diagnose HCM. These maneuvers are Valsalva, Standing, Squatting, Hand Grip Maneuver, and Leg Elevation. Valsalva is when someone bears down, like when lifting something heavy. Valsalva increases pressure in the chest, causing increased resistance to blood filling the heart, thereby decreasing preload. Standing up from a squatting position decreases blood flow to the heart or decreases preload. On the other hand, squatting from a standing position has the opposite effect and increases preload. Hand grip maneuver, where one squeezes their hands into fists, increases peripheral resistance and thereby increases afterload. Lastly, leg elevation leads to increased blood flow to the heart and increases preload. Aortic stenosis has a similar systolic crescendo decrescendo murmur as HCM. Maneuvers can help differentiate these two abnormalities. Maneuvers that decrease afterload or increase preload increase the murmur of aortic stenosis. The reason is that there is more blood flow that is able to pass the stenotic or narrowed valve. The greater volume of blood passing stenosed aortic valves, the greater turbulence that is created, which leads to a louder sound. Maneuvers that increase afterload decrease the murmur of aortic stenosis because there's more resistance to blood being pushed out of the heart, creating less blood flow past the stenotic valve and less blood flow disruption. Squatting and leg raising increase the murmur of aortic stenosis, while Valsalva and standing decrease the murmur of aortic stenosis. Hand grip maneuver decreases the murmur of aortic stenosis as this increases the afterload. How maneuvers affect the HCM murmur was difficult for me to understand. Once I thought of the HCM murmur similar to how we whistle, it made more sense to me. When we whistle, we purse our lips to make a small passage and blow air. This causes a loud whistle, but if we open our mouth wider, the sound softens. A similar process occurs with the HCM murmur. The less blood present in the left ventricle, the less distended the left ventricle is, and the greater the outflow obstruction from the enlarged left ventricular muscle, resulting in a louder murmur. The more blood present, the more distended the left ventricle is. And as a result, the less the outflow obstruction. Maneuvers that increase preload lead to a quieter HCM murmur, and maneuvers that decrease preload intensify the HCM murmur. This is also demonstrated with maneuvers that increase afterload. An increase in afterload creates a greater resistance, preventing the flow of blood past the left ventricle obstruction, resulting in a softer murmur. While a physical exam is important, testing is critical as many people affected by HCM will not have characteristic physical exam findings. The initial step is to begin with an EKG. An EKG is the most sensitive test to detect HCM, but the findings are not specific. Typical EKG findings include left ventricular hypertrophy, there are several different criteria that help identify left ventricular hypertrophy on an EKG. One set of criteria is called the Cornell Voltage Criteria. The Cornell Voltage Criteria states that if the height of the S wave in V3 and the height of the R wave in AVL is greater than 28 millimeters for men or 20 millimeters for women, there is concern for left ventricular hypertrophy. Other findings of HCM include an inversion of the T waves in the precordial leads. This typically presents as the T wave pointing in the opposite direction 
the QRS complex is pointing, a phenomenon called T-wave discordance. This is due to the repolarization of the large left ventricle. Lastly, the asymmetric hypertrophy will cause dagger-like Q waves that are narrow and less than 40 milliseconds in duration. These narrowed Q waves are typically seen in lateral leads, 1, AVL, V5, V6, and the inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF. While EKG findings can be helpful, echocardiograms or cardiac MRI are the best at confirming a diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Well, that was a brief review of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Remember, the five key points we reviewed are, number one, HCM is an irregular enlargement of the left ventricle causing heart contraction, conduction, and blood flow abnormalities. Number two, Symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy include fatigue, shortness of breath, palpitations, chest pain, and can even cause someone to lose consciousness. The reason HCM is so important is that it increases the risk of arrhythmias and sudden death. Number three, HCM is a crescendo-decrescendo systolic heart murmur. The murmur is louder with maneuvers that decrease preload and quieter with maneuvers that increase afterload. Remember the whistling analogy. Number four, typical EKG findings include left ventricular hypertrophy, T-wave discordance, and sharp dagger-like Q-waves in the lateral leads, one AVL, V5, V6, and the inferior leads, two, three AVF. Number five, lastly, if you suspect hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the definitive testing is echocardiogram or cardiac MRI. Well, that was a brief review of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. If you learned something, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe. If you have ideas for future episodes, place them down below. This is Dr. K from My Medical School, and I'll see you next time.